time to start a fire. This is Simple Living with Fiata, and I'm building my home for the first time with very little experience. My concrete floating slab is still not heated, which means it's going to be prone to heaving. Hopefully this week changes everything and we can get heat in the slab so that we can protect the slab and protect the plumbing underneath it. Last week, I left you off with Ryan from SMHC who hooked up this whole beautiful wall of copper for our wood boiler and also the electric boiler. Just have a little bit more to hook up today, I guess, eh? Yeah. And the wiring. And I'm gonna pull the 12-2 for the hot water tank. So that's done and out of the way, even though we're not gonna be hooking that up yet. But what I am going to be doing is as soon as there's heat in the slab, I'm gonna be insulating this room and I want all the wires run at least for now. As I finished up the little bit of wiring, Ryan was working on finishing up the copper. I've just gotta say, it's really nice seeing this all go in. Being able to take a break from researching, first of all, is so nice. And second of all, having someone here who knows what they're doing and has done it so many different times before is also just so incredible. It's gonna help me sleep better at night knowing my heat was done properly. This is the heat exchanger that I talked about last week. So this heat exchanger is gonna be heating our domestic water. The hot glycol comes from the wood boiler and runs through this heat exchanger. And then the domestic water goes around the outside of that and that provides heat to all of our domestic water. That means I can wash my dishes, do my laundry, take a shower and have a hot bath all powered by my wood boiler. Wow. <laughs> like I say, they got quite a bit of memory to them, right? Yeah. Ryan is hooking up the outside wood boiler now, which I'm so excited about. It's crazy to think that over a full year ago, I started researching my wood boiler and which one I wanted to buy and what was gonna be right for our home. And now it's getting installed. Brian finished hooking up the pumps and before we knew it, it was the end of the day. Good morning, we are on like day three of a snowstorm. It's crazy out. I went out this morning and got myself a snow rake because there's so much snow on the roof and there's no insulation. So all the heat's gonna go up and melt the snow off the roof and I'm worried about it getting really icy and thick and heavy up there. It has snowed so much. I'm not getting like a ton of snow off. If I'm gonna get more off, I need to get my ladder out. I am now going to try to shovel off my trailer because a lot of snow fell at once and it hasn't had a chance to melt a lot of it off yet. Just cause the trailer's a little bit more weak, that's for sure. <laughs> I can't find the supports to make this chimney taller, so I'm just gonna deal with it another day and get the cap on the top right now. And then we're gonna start filling with glycol. So Ryan is officially filling the system with glycol, checking things out, releasing air, and making sure that nothing is leaking. Oh, we're leaking. That is nice, just being able to turn it off there. Yeah. Ryan spent some time fixing some of the leaking points and it was so cool watching the air purge from the system and seeing this whole thing fill up with glycol. I was super nervous that my in-floor heating was gonna leak, which is really silly because my air pressure test held for six months, but everything was fine and ready to go for the next day. We get heat today. <laughs> I've been saying this for a few days now, but today is actually the day. Let's do this. I gave a call to the guy who I bought the wood boiler and chimney off of and he let me know that I don't need chimney supports when it's just one stack so that's perfect I'm getting this all hooked up before starting the fire ah have to get a ladder probably should have just asked Ryan for help on that one <laughs> that was kind of dumb but it's up I just have to get the top piece up probably with a ladder mm -hmm. 
it's time to start the fire. I am so stoked. I really hope it goes well. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is nuts. We got hardwood. I'm gonna try the method where you build the fire from like bottom up, you build it backwards. So you start with the bigger logs on the bottom and then build with your kindling and your fire starter. Um, it looks pretty cool in here. This is gonna be the last time it looks like this. Time to start a fire. So these are the grates in the bottom. And when you do this, they shake. And then you can pull the ash out here. Nice. There's a kitchen in the back. This guy, you literally just click furnace on. So I don't know what temperature to set it to quite yet. There we go, set okay. 180. Differential of 10 degrees, also fine. Like sensor one, that's the temperature of the oh. water. So you can see it rising. Oh, cool. The furnace is officially on, which is so cool. <laughs> I want to let it burn for a minute or two and let it uh, get some coals going. Okay. Cool. I like the wood on the bottom that you did. You like that? Yeah, I haven't Start. seen that before. It's interesting. Yeah. So the fan is going now that the furnace is on and that shuts on and off whenever it gets to temperature, whenever it's not within range. That's so cool. I bet this is getting warmer too. Yeah. Is it warming up a bit? Yeah. Cool. So this is the supply, right? Yep. Okay. Oh, cool. So you can see that there's air bubbles coming up. And Ryan, you were saying that that's because just once heat starts hitting it, more air goes through it? Um, or it just it helps it um, circulate through. Helps it circulate, okay. We purged it. We're gonna go through it a few more times and okay. just make sure that everything's gonna come out of it. Time to check on the fire. So a lot of this day is getting everything started and for Ryan to be just like checking the system, testing the system and everything, purging air and checking the fire because it's the first day. <laughs> and it's hard to get that bed of coals going. So it is at temperature, which means the fan is probably off. This might not be going like crazy, but I'm just gonna check it. Yeah, she's out. <laughs> she is out, out. The fan is kicking back on, which means I got too low of a temperature. Hopefully this time the fire holds and I don't mess with it. Oh. Okay, yeah, she's going now. How'd you do it? This is quite the learning curve. I really kind of freaked out when I opened the door and the fire was out, but it's self dampened. So we'll see how this goes. I could be wrong, but as long as it's up to temperature or within range, the fan is off and then it's dampening the fire so that it doesn't get too hot in there because if it gets too hot then the glycol will burn off which will happen slowly over time anyways but i think i've got the hang of this so far yeah it is quite the amount of air it's a ridiculous amount of system I think we can officially call this a homestead now. Because this is the first day of the system running, it's gonna take a while to heat up the slab in that house. So it's gonna take a lot of fuel to get it to the temperature that we wanna get it to, which means the next few days is gonna be a lot of work with the wood. And then hopefully after that, it won't be that much work, but it isn't insulated. So it is gonna be a little bit more work this winter. I'm just gonna pile this up and see where it gets to by the time it's like, let's say eight o'clock tonight and I'll come back and check on it. I'll do a mixture of poplar and maple. So really crap wood and then hardwood. The fan is kicking on now and this should ignite a little bit better. 
What a monumental feeling hearing these pumps run from the electrical that we brought in over a year and a half ago and having heat come through these pipes from the wood boiler powered by the wood that I cut to clear for this home and our homestead. I'm honestly feeling mentally better and like I can actually get work done and I'm also feeling more energized from taking the break that I needed and also thanks to some natural energy with matcha, L-theanine, ashwagandha, turmeric and lion's mane all found in Magic Mind. Magic Mind gives you sustained energy without feeling caffeine jitters and without a caffeine crash. So on your first day, you're going to experience 50 to 60% of the benefits. You'll experience more energy without feeling wired, which is how I feel on any other caffeine substance. And you'll experience a more dialed in focus, which is one of my favorite things about Magic Mind because I do struggle with focus. You guys might not know this about me, but I am often caught staring into space multiple times a day by my family. <laughs> Mommy stirred space. <laughs> Day three, you'll experience 75% of the benefits, crossing more things off your to-do list. And day five, you're going to be experiencing benefits from cordyceps mushrooms like ashwagandha that will now be in full effect. I feel like I actually get tasks done on Magic Mind. And for my husband, who is an avid coffee drinker, he absolutely loves taking one of these when he wants to get a lot of focused work done. To get more checked off your to-do list and feel like you're in a natural flow state, check out Magic Mind linked in my description in the pinned comment below. And get 45% off and free shipping when you subscribe to Magic Insiders. Okay, it's at 138, which means we're low on fuel, unfortunately. Goodness, this thing just really likes wood. Wow. Okay, I just have to say, it's like nine o'clock at night. The snow in here that was on the slab is melting. This slab in this room is slightly less freezing. I'm so excited. I'm gonna move my battery banks in here and I'll get this room hopefully insulated tomorrow. It's been four hours since I fed this last. It has dropped from one like 70, 160 to 103, which is not warm enough. Barely any wood left. There's like three logs and a bed of coals. Time to turn the furnace back on. Time for bed. Good morning. <laughs> I think the wood boiler is done. Cam filled the wood boiler around four or five this morning. Oh, 95. Not too bad. I just got some fuel in there because, you know, as a mom, you got to get ready. We're getting ready for school. It's our sixth snow day in the last eight school days. So <laughs> driving her in again. Honestly, I'm so happy I hired out snow plowing this year. Look at this. It's up to my knees. Now that everything is running and it's a little bit more chill, I'm going to try my best to explain what is all going on here. This is the supply and the return of the glycol that's coming straight from the wood boiler. So this is pretty hot to touch and it comes up and over the door to this side. So this pipe is the supply. There's a thermometer here telling the system the temperature. Then the supply goes into the heat exchanger, which is this unit, and then it goes back up through this heat exchanger, which is going to be what heats our domestic water. So the glycol runs through the middle and then domestic water will run around the outside completely separated, which is so cool because I get to have a nice hot bath powered by our wood boiler. That is so incredible. And when there's not enough heat, it'll switch on to the electric portion of the hot water tank. So what a heat exchanger does is it exchanges the heat from one system to the next system. So although both systems are running off glycol, call it still is completely a separate liquid source so the wood boiler heat source warms up the in-floor heating heat source there's two thermometers here one is for the supply it's coming in above 60 degrees celsius and it's returning above 50 degrees celsius so the glycol will run through the system go through all of its loops in through the floor 
come out a little bit cooler and back up into the heat exchanger where it will get warm again. These are the circulation pumps for the system. I forget which one is which. I'm pretty sure this one is always running. Let's bring Ryan back to explain this a bit more. It senses when the water is cooling down. If the water goes down below that point, it'll shut this pump off. This pump is the one that's peeling all the heat out of the heat exchanger here. Okay. So it'll shut that pump off so that your electric boiler isn't trying to heat this plate up and send heat back out into the wood boiler. Oh, okay. That way it doesn't become a load. This pump is going to run all the time. And our pump down here is just picking up the temperature of the room. Thermostat is doing that and mm -hmm. communicating through this, telling our pump down here, hey, we need to turn on. So this temperature sensor tells the electric boiler to turn on if there isn't enough heat coming from the wood boiler. So for now, I'm gonna keep this off because the wood boiler is having a hard time getting the floor to temperature. It'll be there for insurance purposes and to have as a backup heat source, but we should be getting all the heat from the wood boiler. This guy is the air release valve. So if there's any air trapped in the tubes, this guy will basically get rid of the air. The expansion tank also does this as well. So this guy's the expansion tank. This guy is the glycol feeder. It pumps glycol back into the system. If it needs more glycol in the system, especially if air is purging out of the system, glycol needs to fill it back up. Just again, I want to say thank you so much to Ryan from SMHC for putting this beautiful piece of artwork on the wall and getting our boiler hooked up and answering all so of my questions. So you might be wondering if my next Ontario, steps, check out and again, SMHC, this is going to be a little bit out of order. So I need to wire this room, even if it's just pulling lines through, and I need to get some insulation in this room specifically, even if it's just temporarily, because we live here now and we need this water source to not be freezing. So this room needs to stay warm. I think I'll have my chest freezer along this wall. So I'll put a dedicated outlet here for it. The ERV unit on the wall needs either a 15 or 20 amp. Pretty simple though. And then I should be able to insulate. I think I have this like somewhat roughed in. There's one more thing I forgot I need to do. I need to do blocking in here, fire blocking. Long drives, nothing here but moonlight. Raindrops on the red dust It's never smelled so good It is time to insulate. This is so exciting. It's only 11 o'clock in the morning. And for the last like few months, to be honest, most of my days hadn't even started until 11 in the morning because it was so exhausted. So if you're wondering, I am getting my energy levels back. It was really nice the last like week and a bit that Ryan was here because I was able to still relax. It was a really good and much needed break. I unfortunately have run out of Rockwell insulation. So I'm going to Home Depot. I need strapping in order to make this whole vapor barrier insulation thing work. So I'm just gonna run into town and get that. Now that I actually have the insulation, I'm just gonna get this done. The exterior walls are officially insulated. Now to deal with especially this section that's wide open. The pink stuff actually works a little bit better for this because it's way more bendable. And uh, these studs aren't, you know, exactly 16 inches on center because it's such a small wall. Next up, I'm gonna start doing strapping, but what I need to do first is kind of like, I don't know what to call it. It's kind of like blocking. You put like pieces of wood along the edges here and in the corners for either your drywall or your plywood or 
or your strapping. And while I get this done, I have a question for all of you. So as you noticed, I bought Rockwell insulation and the pink stuff, and I'm not sure which one to go with. I decided to go with Rockwell for my maintenance room just because it's a little bit more fireproof, but it's really expensive and to do our whole house with it, I'm not sure it'll be worth it. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. We're not going with spray foam. That is just so expensive now. <laughs> I overlapped my vapor barrier with a wood frig. That is not gonna come out now. All right, I've pulled all the nails now. The vapor barrier should be released from under the wood. There we go. Now I can tape the vapor barrier I'm putting here to this. That was a pain in the butt. That put me back a little bit. All right, I tried. There's just so much still to do. Like little things, like remember that wire I screwed up last week? I have to take it off. But that takes time to do and it's like five o'clock now. I still have to start dinner and collect all the wood for tonight for the wood boiler. I just think this is not going to happen. So I think what I'll do is actually just take my batteries. It is quite warm in here. So I think if I throw a tarp over, it'll, you know, help a little bit with the um, cold, but I've just run out of time. And we promised our daughter a movie night with ice cream. And I'd rather do that and say it is what it is and spend time with my family. As always, thank you so much for watching, especially this huge milestone of getting heat into our home. And for dialed in focus and extra energy, be sure to check out Magic Mind linked in my description and the pinned comment below. Liking, commenting, and subscribing makes a huge difference for my channel and my family. So thank you so much. And with that, I will see you next week.